Hello guys and welcome back. This is part one of a series of videos I'm going to do about the minimum data set you need to obtain in order to perform an echocardiogram. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about all the minimum data set you need to obtain for the parasternal long axis view. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like this video and to subscribe to my channel. So let's start. I'm doing this video following the guidelines and recommendations of the British Society of Echocardiography. They released a practical guideline for performing a comprehensive transthoracic echocardiogram in adults. This is the British Society of Echocardiography Minimum Dataset. You can find this online on the BSC website. This guideline outlines a structured approach to image acquisition and standardized measurement protocol for performing a standard transthoracic echocardiogram. Whilst this approach is recommended in all patients undergoing standard adult transthoracic echocardiogram, it is recognized that in some clinical scenarios, the acquisition of the entire minimum data set and recommended views and measures may not be practical or possible. It is anticipated that this guideline will form the basis of every standard adult transthoracic echocardiogram and that the data or information acquired will be sufficient to diagnose normal cardiac anatomy, function and hemodynamics. However, when pathology is present, Additional views are necessary and should be acquired according to the appropriate guideline. So, what are the benefits of having a guideline? Number one, to support cardiology teams and echocardiographers to develop local imaging protocols and quality control programs for adult transthoracic echocardiography by providing a structure against which studies in any department can be audited. Number two, to promote standardization and quality by defining a recommended minimum data set of descriptive terms and measurements in conjunction with a systematic approach to performing and reporting a comprehensive standard adult transthoracic echocardiogram. And number three, to minimize inter and intra observer variability and facilitate the accurate comparison of serial echocardiograms. One of their recommendations is wherever possible, transthoracic echocardiography should be performed in an environment that enables acquisition of the best available image quality. Before starting your echocardiogram, it's very important to identify the information. You need to record the patient's name, the patient's hospital number, the patient's date of birth, and the echocardiographer name or initials. It's very important that the patient details should be confirmed as soon as the patient enters the echo lab. It's also important to obtain the patient's body surface area by measuring their weight and height. Age, gender and body dimensions are significant factors that influence absolute measures of chamber or vessel size and valve area and should be considered in every standard transthoracic echocardiogram. Also report and take into consideration the blood pressure and heart rate recording. 
parameters of cardiac function are heavily influenced by hemodynamics loading conditions and are therefore susceptible to variations in heart rate and blood pressure. It is therefore recommended that the findings of a standard transthoracic echocardiogram are considered in the setting of blood pressure, heart rhythm and heart rate at the time of the examination. So the next I'm going to show you is a structured approach to image acquisition and standardized measurement protocol for performing a standard transthoracic echocardiogram. In part one of these videos, I'm going to show you the minimum data set you need to obtain of the parasternal long axis view. First, obtain a parasternal long axis view and perform a visual assessment of the cardiac chambers. Pay attention to the right ventricle, the left ventricle and the left atrium. Then, do a visual assessment of the mitral valve anatomy and the aortic valve anatomy. Next, do a visual assessment of the wall motion. Check the left ventricular wall motion and the right ventricular free wall motion. Also, Assess the aortic anatomy and do a visual assessment of the pericardium and the pleural space before you move forward. Now on the parasternal long axis view, using color Doppler, do an aortic valve color flow assessment. On the same view, using color Doppler, Move the color Doppler box to do a mitral valve color flow assessment. Now let's move to some quantitative assessment. Freeze the image at the end of diastole to measure. Interventricular septal diameter in diastole. Left ventricular diameter in diastole and posterior wall diameter in diastole. Now freeze the image at the end of systole and you can measure the left ventricular diameter in systole and the left atrium diameter. In end of diastole also measure the right ventricular outflow tract diameter. In the parasternal long axis view, you can align the cursor with the mitral valve in order to obtain the mitral valve M mode. Now obtain a zoomed view of the aortic valve and do a visual assessment of the aortic valve anatomy. In the same view, use color Doppler and assess the aortic valve color flow. Freeze the image in mid-systole and you can measure here the left ventricular outflow tract diameter. Now this is the perfect moment to measure the aortic annulus diameter the aortic root or sinus of Valsalva diameter and the sinotubular junction diameter. Move the probe a little bit higher and measure the proximal ascending aorta diameter. In a zoom view of the aortic valve, Place the cursor across the aortic valve and obtain the aortic valve M mode. Now obtain a zoom view of the mitral valve and do a visual assessment of the mitral valve anatomy. 
Use color Doppler on the mitral valve and do a mitral valve color flow assessment. Let's review this one more time. I'm going to show you on a video all the minimum data set you need to obtain of the parasternal long axis view. Start with doing a visual assessment of the cardiac chambers, the cardiac valves, and the wall motion. Now using the color Doppler, do a color flow assessment across the aortic valve. Now move the color box and do a visual assessment of the blood flow across the mitral valve. Now freeze the image at the end of diastole and measure the septum, left ventricle and posterior wall diameter. Freeze the image at the end of systole and measure the left ventricular diameter in systole and the left atrial diameter. Also in diastole you can measure the right ventricular outflow tract diameter. Now obtain a zoom view of the aortic valve and do a visual assessment of the valve anatomy. Also use color Doppler to assess the blood flow across the aortic valve. Once you're ready, this is the perfect moment to do some measurements. Free the image at mid systole and measure the left ventricular outflow tract. Also measure the aortic annulus, aortic root and sinotubular junction diameter. Close to this view, you can also measure the proximal ascending aorta diameter. Now place the cursor across the aortic valve and obtain the aortic valve M mode. Now let's continue and zoom on the mitral valve to do a visual assessment of the mitral valve anatomy. And once again, use color Doppler in order to assess the blood flow across the mitral valve. This is the minimum data set you need to obtain for the parasternal long axis view. I'm going to post the rest of the views very soon, so thank you for watching and don't forget to like this video and to subscribe to my channel. See you, bye!